As we approach the 21st century, fantastic changes are taking place which make what was impossible in the industrial age suddenly possible in the information age. In Malaysia, an ambitious program is taking shape. Vision 2020 is moving the country into a new era. Malaysia will be a pioneer in electronic government. This will be a multimedia network linking government centers around the country to facilitate intergovernmental collaboration and citizen access to government services. Within a multimedia super corridor, land and space have been devoted to new cities. The first, Cyber Jaya, is focused on Malaysia's vision of a global society. Democracy is maturing, people can share more. The presence of the internet and the various other networks around the world dictates that we can share information easily. People will start thinking in terms of what can be shared rather than what can be kept. When you keep it to yourselves, you become poorer for it. Today, to retain competitive age, you have to share, you have to collaborate, you have to find partners. We will have a participative society. People own information, people have access to information. They will be able to participate actively in governing society itself. Participation and open collaboration became keynotes of the country's development program. We claimed from the beginning that we didn't have the answers. We don't even have the questions. So our first task was to think through what would help Malaysia jumpstart in the information technology race. Corporate knowledge and business experience were drawn into a forum dedicated to a single purpose. We had about 18 companies participating on a volunteer basis for four and a half months. The 18 companies under normal circumstances will slaughter each other trying to get a deal. But put them together in a room with a common objective, they come together with a beautiful vision. A vision that saw how electronic technology could set in motion rapid transition from the old society to a new. What is demanded on us is to change our way of life, making Malaysia an industrialized country by the year 2020. That's not an easy thing to do. The European countries take 200 years to move from agriculture era to industry. But we are trying to do it in 30 years. We were very much technology people talking about how do we create electronic government. Now, unfortunately, we did not think about record keeping. So this has to be fitted in later. The rule of law and citizens' rights rely upon the open availability of evidence. Government make policies based on evidence and evidence based on records. And records must be kept accurately. It got legal implications. For instance, if a person gets his pension, but he dies, the derivative pension will go to his living spouse. It's best for us to address all those issues and to keep uh, the policies correct regarding security, sanctity, authenticity, audit trail, so that uh, whatever that we need to keep are kept well. The National Archives of Malaysia has strong views about the need to protect and preserve electronic documents. Being archivists, we are very much concerned about the integrity of the documents itself. We have to make sure that government departments that created the records themselves know how to ensure that the records are not lost, erased, or not tampered with. They're not like paper records. Paper records, uh, you can see with your own uh, naked eye, is there. But electoral records should be treated differently from paper records. And in a busy society, complete and accurate records of policies, transactions and decisions need to be readily available over many decades. Electronic systems must capture why and how records are created and who made them. The rule of law has a very large correlation with making sure that facts are accurate and correct. We cannot afford to lose uh, the, the records. If there is a case, if there is liability to be established, it has to be maintained at whatever expense. There is a long way towards establishing uh, norms in order to uh, maintain these records. The evidence will be used, retrieved and accessed in a way that is different 
from what we are uh, accustomed to now. Protecting citizens' rights to information will be a paramount concern. So are traditional paper records part of the brave new future? How do we make sure that key documents can be read 30 years, 50 years down the road? My initial thoughts will be that for key documents, you have to have both electronic form as well as the paper-based form. We talk about paperless government, but to my mind, it's paperless government. I don't think electoral government is meant to completely do completely away with hard copies. What is important for the government is what kind of information is to be kept in what form. In the complex virtual world of multimedia electronic records, governments will have to rethink. Where is evidence to be held? How should it be controlled? What do we select? Out of the tons and tons of information that is coming to you today, there are the gems that you have to cull from all that. Those, those are the sort of things that you have to, archivists will have to develop a knack for. They will have to conceive of their own kind of paradigm, of how they fit into this developing world. At the National Archives of Malaysia, a key study group embarks upon the task of shaping a policy for the management of electronic records. Preservation of the electronic records is going to be very costly. What we want is information to reach the public. There could be some information still in the departments, but the regulatory function will still be with the archives. We can't just be on the old footpath that we are just the custodian of records. There must be a shift in our views. We must be able to tell them what can we offer them. That is the most important thing. Then only I think we can influence people to come to us. Archivists recognize that waiting for government records to reach the archives is no longer an option. We have to be proactive. We have to advise the government departments even before records are created, even before the system is being built. I'm getting very nervous uh, the moment we talk about electronic records. We see them in diskettes, for example. So what will happen to this diskette if you don't have the machine to read them? They're so intangible. They are there and hidden. With technology changing very rapidly, we tend to lose them if you have no good control. In the unseen world ahead, training in the management of electronic records needs new significance, backed as it must be with effective research. The key that we don't have an answer to today is how do we make sure we preserve these documents, how do we authenticate these documents and so on. And I think we have to do research on this. Once we have done that and these research findings can be shared around the world with academia and the government and so on, then this can snowball into a de facto standard that people will start adopting around the world. As Malaysia connects to the global community, there must be a common drive to safeguard the right to evidence. No one can take the survival of electronic information for granted. I too take it for granted with a lot of other priority things to happen. Now that I'm looking at it seriously and uh, it's, it's alarming me and I'm sure when you lose a certain data you will lose it forever. And uh, I think that is <laughs> an alarming thing for us to, to take note. Vision 2020 has the power to transform Malaysia's society and the lives of all its citizens. But the real challenge is to develop systems which protect the information it generates about individuals and government. Only then can it be a world of justice and equality which everyone shares. If you have the law, you have the support from the government, if you have the cooperation from the IT and of course from the archivists themselves, there's nothing that can stop us from doing it. We have to do it. Given enough time, enough money, we can create a solution to what, what we need. And it has to be collaborative. Everybody needs to be aware and everybody needs to be educated on what kind of, uh, uh, what if you don't do it? I mean, the, the question will be, what if you don't do it? What's going to happen?